Most adults alive today grew up without the internet or mobile phones, let alone smartphones and tablets with voice commands and apps for everything. These new technologies have altered our lifestyle in a way few of us could have imagined a few decades ago. But have we reached the end of the line? What else could turn up that could make our lives so much more different? Faster computers? More gadgets? It is in fact so much more than that. Technologies have embarked on an exponential growth curve and we are just getting started. In 10 years we will look back on our life today and wonder how we could have lived with such primitive technology. The gap will be bigger than between today and the 1980s. Get ready because you are in for a rough ride. Google's director of engineering, predicts that by 2029 computer will exhibit intelligent behavior equivalent to that of a human, and that by 2045 computers will be a billion times more powerful than all of the human brains on earth. Once computers can fully simulate a human brain and surpass it, it will cause an intelligence explosion that will radically change civilization. The rate of innovation will progress exponentially, so much that it will become impossible to foresee the future course of human history. This point in time is called the singularity. Experts believe that it will happen in the middle of the 21st century, perhaps as early as 2030, but the median value of predictions is 2040, a senior manager of Google told at the conference The Wall Street Journal in California, that humans can transcend the limits of their biology and face the biological death of the body from the 2030s. According to the theory of Ray Kurzweil engineering director of Google humans will start to inject nanorobots that will prevent many diseases and can even eat any junk food without danger to health, since the nanobots will be responsible for collecting the right nutrients and discard the bad fats. He even dares to venture that from the 2040s on, human beings could develop ways to create new parts of their own body to replace some damaged ones that could be both biological and robotic. Ray Kurzweil apart from being the engineering director of Google is a scientist inventor and writer of 65 years, he has been working for years on the subject of deceiving death, as reflected in the book he wrote The Singularity is Near, the book has become a bestseller. He predicts a disconcerting future in which humans will be incorporated into the web for the mid-21st century, software-based humans, which means that humans will live on the web work via the web and can project their bodies if they want to avoid unsafe trips in some cases. Personally I think that his head has gone a little, but other scientists were taken for crazies at another time and ended up being absolutely right. The same Google manager, Ray Kurzweil, 65 years old, he hopes to be alive to enjoy all these achievements of the technological revolution of humanity for the next decades since he is using a system developed by him to keep his body alive and healthy and in this way, he believes, could get to deceive the unpleasant death to which all human beings have been sentenced. But death in a short time according to Ray Kurzweil could be a thing of the past. He wears the tie of the interviews, he usually comes to them with a Mickey Mouse, very colorful, and looks like a technician, one of those experts versed in complex matters and with little ability to communicate but appearances deceive, and the Venezuelan, son of Spaniards, Jose Luis Cordero, mechanical engineer by MIT, MBA by INSEED, graduate in economics from Georgetown University, professor of the Singularity University of Silicon Valley and friend and faithful follower of Ray Kurzweil, describes torrentially and with great passion that series of shocking and striking ideas that has come to tell Madrid invited by the Rafael del Pino Foundation. Upon entering, and before I can ask anything, has already told that within 20 to 30 years we will have reached immortality and that our communication will be telepathic. His vision of the future and of the enormous changes is summarized in the following keys, which he explained in Madrid to El Confidential, we will live two incredible decades, in the next 20 years we will see more progress than in the previous two millennia, science and technology are changing exponentially because everything that can be digitized improves in that way, but it is something that humans do not understand because we are programmed to think linearly, I give you an example. In 1977, after seven years of research, 
1% of the human genome had been sequenced, so if we continued at that pace, it would take almost 700 years to complete it completely. It's not like that, in fact, when you have that 1% you are already halfway there, because when you are exponential, then you have 2%, then 4, then 16, and with the next step you have reached the end of the road, we are going to see magic in these 20 years, I had the opportunity to visit in Sri Lanka Arthur C. Clarke, the engineer worldwide known as author of science fiction, and the third of his three laws of the future affirms that any advanced technology does not differ from the magic. And that is what we are going to see, in 20 years we will communicate telepathically and death will become an option. The human being will decide if he wants to die or not. And with a great physical state, because, for many years you have, you will continue as at 20. Age will be biologically controllable. And that will seem magic to us. Everything will be very cheap, when technologies start they are obviously expensive, and worse than expensive, they are bad. The first mobile phones were bricks and 80% of their size was occupied by the battery, today we have these beauties that are no longer telephones but computers, any smartphone has more computing power than the one that had the Apollo mission in 1969. Technology, when it becomes massive, becomes cheap and good, with the control of aging it will happen the same, because it will be very expensive at the beginning, I speak of a short period of time of a few months or a year, and then it will be much cheaper. We enter a new age, that of the augmented humans who will live indefinitely, with more abilities, more love, and more understanding, the first chip to sequence genomes cost a billion dollars, and it will end up costing 10, the kids in high school will have it in class to do experiments sequencing a rabbit or a plant, this will transform everything, because it will change the vision of humanity, Elon Musk has announced that he wants to die on Mars, because we can travel to the red planet and colonize it. Right now there are 8 missions started to travel to Mars in 2 decades, 4 are public and 4 private, and Musk says that the first tickets for Mars they will cost only $500,000. Also there will be radical changes in the brain, by improving the hardware, through nanotechnology and biotechnology, and software, through infotechnology and cognotechnology, of the human being, we will not only have broadband telepathy, at high speed, but we will improve, increase and overcome, all what I want to transmit to you is in my brain, but I cannot tell you everything, nor with the clarity and speed I want, because the brain processes very slowly, but with the technological improvements we will be able to process in a second our whole life, which now makes us something incomprehensible. We can cure all the problems of hunger and poverty, the economy will change and we will be able to travel to Mars whenever we want, this will also mean that we will be able to communicate much more quickly and much more efficiently than before, a lot of the human problems come because we cannot explain everything well, but that will end in 20 years, when we live the beginning of the post-human age, with augmented humans who will live indefinitely, with more abilities, with more love, and understanding. Since we will not be old anymore, we will not have to retire, but that does not mean we have to earn a living forever, work is a curse, a divine punishment, in the future people will do what they want. In the last forum of Davos raised the creation of a guaranteed minimum wage for people to live, because the work is going to be done by machines, and we can dedicate ourselves to creative and innovative activities, or to travel, but not only to the beach, but to the moon or Mars, or wherever we want. This is something radical, it is the end of the human age. We are going to live a much more transcendental change than the one we lived in transforming from apes to men, because that jump was 1% in our genome, and now it will be much bigger. The relationship between the post-humans and the current humans will be like the one we have with the ants. We are going to become the cells of a larger organism, of a planetary brain. We talk about the awakening of the universe the collective brain we have three brains, the reptilian, the limbic and the neocortex, now we are going to create a fourth brain, an exocortex in the cloud, which is going to be distributed and decentralized, as is the internet, to which we will connect only if we want. 
Cloud is an incredibly fast and big brain. And what comes next is the end of human age, is something that enters the realm of science fiction, we do not know what will happen with the technological singularity. We will be part of a collective intelligence in which we will disappear as independent human beings. And it is not so strange, we are the descendants of bacteria and unicellular organisms that millions of years ago decided to come together and create multicellular organisms. We are going to become the cells of a larger organism, of a planetary brain. We speak of the awakening of the universe, and the maximum unit of the universe will be the computronium. Those who will be left behind these changes will have great implications on beliefs, because religion will have no role in the future. Great religions were born to explain death, Westerners through resurrection, Orientals through reincarnation. But we are going to cure aging and death, because they are diseases, and therefore, eliminable. We can see it in the cells, some of which do not age. Cancer is the most beautiful disease there is because it is composed of mutant cells that do not age and can live as long as they have food. They are proof that aging is not something irremediable. Death is not either, and that will become the great problem for the survival of religions. In Venezuela we have an indigenous people, the Yanomami, who do not want to speak Spanish, who do not want to dress and who refuse to use technology. In the, the United States they have the Amish, who also refuse technology, but these are a bit more stupid, because until the 18th century they used it, and since then they have refused. In the future there will be human groups that will be the same and will refuse to move forward, in general for religious reasons. In these cases there is nothing to do, who wants to stay behind will be left behind. The rest will evolve technologically because the human being is not the end of evolution, it is the beginning of conscious evolution, the beginning of evolution by design.